basically, um, among many others, one of Plato's ideas was his realm of forms. And I'm going to show you the definition here that I looked up. It's basically his realm of forms was the idea, and I'll, I'll just read it, it to you here. Plato's forms, such as beauty, and obviously there are other forms too, like, um, you know, um, I was going to say virtue, but forms like beauty, maybe like intelligence, or the form can be any idea really. But anyways, forms such as beauty are more real than any objects that imitate them. Plato's Socrates held that the world of forms is transcendent to our own world, the world of substances, and also is the essential basis of reality. Superordinate to matter, forms are the most pure of all things. Okay, so basically, to get into that a little bit more, what he's talking about is that the forms are real than the objects that imitate these forms. So there are these forms, like beauty, for example, and then, you know, the form of beauty can turn into a beautiful woman or a beautiful man or a beautiful piece of art. And so in Plato's dialogues, he has Socrates hold the position that Plato has this idea of the world of forms and it's transcendent. So basically, it's like this realm that is above you that you can't access, like the idea of a transcendent God, kind of like God is, we can't experience it directly. And so it's like the realm where ideas, the forms or structures of ideas comes come from, like beauty or maybe another good one would be love like the form of love it could be like uh it could be manifested as a mother's love for a child or like you love your girlfriend or boyfriend um and it's, so it's the essential basis of reality this is what this is how reality is created there are these these structures or the realm of forms that create everything living like the let's say the form or the idea of life can turn into a person or a tree or any other living thing. And so these are the most pure uh, of all things. So basically, I think I think I had I think I had looked up transcendence here too to more clearly define that as well. but let me double check here. Oh yeah. Transcendence within the context of religion. So I'll just read this here too. In religion, transcendence is the aspect of a deity's nature and power that is wholly independent of the material universe beyond all known physical flaws. This is contrasted with imminence, where God is said to be fully present in the physical world and thus accessible to creatures in various ways. In religious experience, transcendence is a state of being that has overcome the limitations of physical existence and by some definitions has also become independent of it. This is typically manifest, or that, that part isn't, isn't important. Psychedelic visions and paranormal visions, like that's, a, that can be a transcendent experience. I guess that is a good example. Like if you get, if you eat mushrooms and you have like a, an amazing psychedelic experience it feels like your mind is transcending your body and you're accessing this other realm that you didn't have access to before whether that actually happens or not is debatable but it sure feels that way i can say from my personal experience um and then there are religious transcendence experiences too according to religious people um so Basically, that's like I said, so if we're applying a tra uh, transcendence to Plato's forms, because they are transcendent, um, similar to the idea of God, so these uh, that means that the realm of forms, these forms are independent of the material universe, they're up, they're above it and outside of it, which makes them transcendent, right? And like I said, 
beyond our perception. 